Hi, I'm Ryan Young and I got into medical school last year and I wanted to share with you how I studied for the MCAT and how I scored a 516 or within the 92nd percentile. This is my study strategy and these are the resources I used, so I hope you enjoy. <laughs> First thing you gotta know is that I spent six months studying for this and I did not flap around at all. Other human beings are wonderful. However, I would suggest you really get away from all of them <laughs> when you're studying for this exam. I spent six hours a day doing this and that's six hours specifically studying. So that's not including the breaks that I would take. The way that I break this up is I would do three subjects a day. And between those three subjects, I, was, I would have breaks. So I'd spend two hours a day going through each, each subject. That would allow me to actually study the subject, but as well as take the time I needed to rest a little bit. Studies have suggested that if you take brief periods of time where you sit and close your eyes and just breathe with your eyes closed, you do retain information better. So for everybody who's studying the MCAT, I would take a meditative second or two after going through a long bout of studying. The material I used, I used the Princeton Review Prep Books and I used that entire packet. However, I did not purchase the online materials for that uh, as it was quite expensive and I got the books from a friend. So they're a slightly outdated version, but I found that to be fine because it turns out that the entire uh, history of, of science and science as we know it has not, changed in the last year, uh, though we are always making different strides in medicine, it doesn't change too much. So if the one you get is a couple years old or a year old, I wouldn't worry about it. An amazing amount, it is more or less the same test. Beyond that, I did purchase all of the AMCAS study materials. Those of us who get the fee waiver, I do believe this is all free, so don't go about purchasing it. I did, and they decided it would be funny if they didn't refund me for that, and it was really funny, so they were totally right about that. <laughs> so for the Princeton Review Book, I did do every single book three times over. And for any of you who haven't seen this yet, the stack of books is like, it's literally like the size of this freaking this over here, you can it, but it's the size of this lamp. Oh God, the pants. Oh, the cactus. Oh gosh, I knocked over my cactus. You might be like, whoa, he just grabbed that cactus with his bare hands, dang, he's crazy. Man, crazy. Somebody who's completely sane in this process would certainly go through all those books three times. You really need to get this material down every single time I went through a book again should be two in this situation. I found a massive amount of things that I did not know despite thinking that I knew it. So don't assume that you know it, you don't. After you go through one of those books, go through it again. It's so boring. It's so boring to go through these books multiple times, but it's so necessary. So try and get every single one of those books done three times. And I know they're fat things, but you gotta get through it. For the MCAT official prep hub that MCAS or the AMC comes out with, I tried to save those towards the end, which is what everybody tells you to do, so I just did that, and it was a great idea. It's a lot of flashcards, a lot of practice questions, and then it's four different free practice tests. So I took two of those a couple weeks out from my test, and then I was able to kind of gauge myself. Am I gonna fail this really badly? Do I need more time? And at the end, I'm so happy. Again, I had gone through all those books three times, so it had been a massive waste of my time and energy. But on my first one, I ended up scoring a chugga chugga. I got a 90th percentile on my first one. So I was like, okay, so the studying's working, but I know I have a lot of progress to make. So I kept my studying up and I took one again. This was seven days later. And when I took it seven days later, my score increased to a 93. 93rd percentile. So I saw that improvement there. Honestly, I would have to take this like 150 times to get a statistically significant amount and tell you what the standard deviation actually was for it. So I took my next one a few months later. So I kept studying. So I was actually forced to continue, continue studying. I got a 96th percentile. Uh, and this was a couple weeks out from my test. And then I took one a few days out from my test and I scored a 96th percentile again. I ended up scoring the 92nd percentile during my test. So a little bit of variability there that results from being actually within the, the testing room and needing to actually do that. You will experience that. I'm gonna provide the link for the MCAT material from AMCAS below so you guys can go and throw your money at that organization, which is obviously on the brink of poverty. After every time that I took one of those practice tests that is published by AMCAS, I went back and I reviewed it all. So double check all that material and make sure you have it down 
It is suggestive of broad subject ranges that you don't know as well as you think. I varied subjects every day, so I would do it in a row. I would do like the physics sections, the psychology sections, biology, biochemistry, and so on and so forth. Each one of those books that is provided by Princeton Review, I would take one and I would do that for two hours, right? So I'd study that subject for two hours. And at the end of every chapter, it gives you a set of questions. So I'd do that set of questions. And while I was doing the questions, I would mirror those questions by the time that is actually spent on the MCAT. So the amount of time that's actually spent on the MCAT, it's a minute and 35 seconds for the science questions. It's a minute and 40 seconds for the cars questions. So you wanna make sure that you're giving yourself about that much time for every single question, or else you're not gonna be prepared to actually do that when the actual MCAT rolls around. Next thing, my lifestyle with regards to studying for the MCAT. Every day I was surfing for two hours. So I was working out a fair amount. In terms of what I was eating, I was eating healthy. I'm a little vegetarian. Let me just tell you a little bit about vegetarianism. I'm not gonna do that. But I was also taking fish oils. I was taking creatine. I was taking Bacopa monieri and I was taking ginkgo biloba, something like that. Ginkgo biloba, ginkgo, I don't know. It's in Ayurvedic medicine. It's not scientifically proven. I think I figured I'll just take these capsules. They're very cheap and I'll just pee it out if it's useless. People apparently used to use them to memorize long verses in uh, in some, I think Hinduism, correct me if I'm wrong, like the long Hindu texts, like uh, the, uh, shoot, it's late at night, guys. What's it called? The, the long Hindu text. Bhagavad Gita in the Bhagavad Gita. <laughs> when I got to the exam, I wore the funny headphones and you know I pulled them off. And beyond that, I went into it with a big smile on my face, just figuring out how to have a good time with it. When I went on my break, I ate a vegetable stir fry that had a bunch of almonds in it to get those omega-3 fatty acids, which are good for your brain. And I also had a conversation with the proctor. His name, I think, was Brad. Brad was going to UC San Diego. I talked for Brad too long, and I got back to my psychology section late. Brad, I just want you to know it was totally worth it. Your conversation with me was really stimulating and fun, and I don't mind that I had to rush my psychology portion, because honestly, it's more fun talking to you, Brad. Okay, guys, if you like studying, again, please like and please subscribe. I appreciate your time and all the love from the face of the world to you. Send you that good energy for the damn cabbage you don't need it. I'm gonna kill it.